Gracious, all loving God, we need a word from you today. We need a word that heals. We need a word that saves. We need a word that renews. We need the very word that you have tailored, designed for your people. So please allow Rachel to decrease so that you will increase. Please open up our ears and our hearts and our minds to receive the word of life that can change everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, I would like to draw your attention to the book of Psalms. And I'd like to read Psalm 133 in its entirety. Um, don't get too excited. It's only got three verses. Uh, and I am going to read it from a translation called the Passion Translation. So it may sound just a little bit different. When you have Psalm 133, feel free to say amen. How truly wonderful and delightful it is to see brothers and sisters living together in sweet unity. It's as precious as the sacred scented oil flowing from the head of the high priest Aaron, dripping down upon his beard and running all the way down to the hem of his priestly robes. This harmony can be compared to the dew dripping from Mount Hermon, which flows down upon the hills of Zion. Indeed, that is where Yahweh has decreed his blessings will be found, the promise of life forever more. So I gotta be honest, I like this song. Um, there's really not any translation of it that doesn't try to convince us that unity is worth having. The problem is way too many of us interpret unity as everybody being the same. That's not what the Psalm says. Because if everybody's the same, then everybody's not singing in harmony. If everybody's the same, everybody's singing in unison. Um, and I can't sing the note that Mr. Willie sings. I, I, I just can't. If, if we gonna sing in unison and I got to sing the note that Mr. Willie sings, I, it's, it's just not gonna happen. I can't sing the note that Mary Emma sings. I, I, I can't, I, I, I just can't. I can't sing the note that Virginia sings. <laughs> I can't sing the note that Christian sings. I can't sing the note that Mother Harvey sings. But here's the thing, even if I could, I wouldn't. Because if I tried to sing your note, and if you tried to sing my note, we really wouldn't be unified. We just be carbon copies of each other. And if we carried ourselves as carbon copies of each other, then we deny what God says about us. God says that every last one of us was fearfully and wonderfully made and every last one of us needs to know it for real and for sure. And if every last one of us is fearfully and wonderfully made and if every last one of us knows it for real and for sure, then we need to be us in God because if we are us in God, then the church of God is exactly what the church of God wants it to be. Watch this, watch this. 
because then the church of God who experiences the favor and blessings of God can spread the favor and blessing of God to every somebody so that all of us experience the good godly blessing that comes from God. Because watch this, watch this, watch this. You know how the Psalm talks about um, the fragrant oil that pours down on Aaron's head toward his beard, toward the very hem of his garment. Do you know what they're describing? They're describing the moment when he was anointed a priest of God. When he was anointed a priest of God, God's blessing started at his head and then it touched his beard. And then it touched the very hem of his garment. You know why it talks about the dew falling on Hermon and coming down to Zion? Because Mount Hermon is at the top of the peak where Jerusalem is. And in order for water to come down to nourish Jerusalem, to change it from desert space to green space, the water has to flow down from the top all the way to the bottom. If we are not all being who God has called us to be, then when God blesses you and God blesses me, then God can't use all of us to bless all the rest of us. Because we are like Aaron. We are like Mount Hermon. We are who God is using to transform the world. We are the ones that God is using to show somebody that they are loved, that they are valued. We are the ones that God is using to show the folk in the jailhouse, in the prison, in the mental institution, in the hospital that nobody ever comes to visit, that they are valuable. And if God is not allowed to use all of us, then there are going to be some people screaming without some mamas to comfort them. There are going to be some mamas and some daddies who are struggling to do right by their children and not knowing how to do right by their children because there's some other mamas and daddies who know the answer and aren't willing to give it. It is time for the church of God to do right by God and stop hiding our relationship with God. It's time for us to go on record as being blessed and highly favored. It's time for us to spread the good stuff that God has given us because it's time for the blessings to flow to all of us. By the way, that's the topic of the sermon. Very simple. All of us. Because God created all of us. Because God offers salvation to all of us. It is important for all of us to know that there is room for all of us to sing if we want to sing. Even if you don't sing on tune, we can find a way to make you blend in. For all of us to dance, even if you have no rhythm, if you want to dance for the Lord, we're going to find a way for you to dance. There's room for all of us to pray. Even if you stumble with your words or if you're going to pray, you have to have it written out. There is room for you in God's church. There's room for all of us to learn the word of God. There is room for all of us to share the love of God. Frankly, there's just room for all of us. And we can no longer go about churching in a way that convinces some folk that they ain't part of the all. So can I tell you a story? I'm a 
preacher's kid, they have expectations of how preacher's kids should be. Um, I'm sure y'all have noticed that being still is not my gift. Um, I've always been the kid who couldn't keep still. I was also often the kid who couldn't shut up, especially if something was wrong, something wasn't right. They don't necessarily expect preachers' kids to call out injustice. They just expect preachers' kids to be perfect. Little bitty adults who know everything about the Bible and know everything about God, assuming that as a preacher's kid, you don't have your own journey and growth. And it took me a long time to be comfortable in my own skin as a daughter of a preacher, as a sister of a preacher, as a sister of a preacher, as a niece of a preacher, as a granddaughter of a preacher, to be comfortable enough in my own skin to worship God, to preach, to sing, to dance, to write, to pray in the way that God gifted me to do it. And it took a Sunday school teacher saying, why are you trying to be your daddy? Why are you trying to be your mama? Why are you trying to be your brother? Why are you acting like who God made you wasn't good enough? Why are you acting like what God has gifted you is a curse and not a gift? You are valuable. Do you and God. So if y'all are ever wondering why part of my message is always be who God has saved you to be. We need you. We need the gifting that God has placed in you. We don't need you to be your brother. We don't need you to be your sister. We don't need you to be your mother. We don't need you to be your father. We don't need you to be your uncle. We just need you to be God's child the way that God made you and to revel in every good and perfect blessing that God gives you because guess what? All of us need all of us to be who God has saved and created us to be. Because when all of us are doing us in God, then the world changes. Amen. Now some of y'all are like, what you talking about, Pastor? You know why the civil rights movement was so powerful that it triggered other movements? because something unusual happened in the civil rights movement in this nation in the 50s and the 60s. The leaders of the movement weren't just men. The leaders of the movement weren't just preachers. The leaders of the movement weren't even all Christian. The leaders of the movement weren't even all adults. Do you know that the most positive change in the civil rights movement came when children marched? When all of us gave the best of us, God began to change the world, not just the United States of America, because the civil rights movement among African Americans in the United States triggered a civil rights movement among Native Americans in the United States, triggered an advancement for women in the United States, triggered students in China and students in Russia to say, this ain't right. Do right. Be right. It's still triggering people all over the world to call for justice to run down like waters. Because when all of us 
do us in God. The blessings that pour down are better than good. So church, you ready to do you and God? You ready to make sure that there is room for all of us to do us in God? I don't know. Some of y'all heard, heard Latoya's report and you're like, well, what is the leg organization? What we got to do to start it up? Why be they that part of the WMS? Well, how are we gonna do that? We don't really have a whole host of age groups. So what? There are other churches near us we could partner with. Think outside the box. Some of y'all heard the message um, about the amount of people who are incarcerated in the, in the United States period, but specifically in the state of Kansas, and now you on fire, you wanna do something for a prison ministry. All of us, all of us, all of us, some of you in here have been going, you know, we, we, we got some folk with, with some silver and some gray and some white. Maybe we need a senior ministry in the church, you know? We, we, we actually do have some young adults in the church. Maybe we should start Rahab, which is the young adult ministry of AME Church. You know, you know, you know. Maybe, maybe we should start, a, start some kind of ministry where we can encourage the young people and the not so young people and the not so not so not so not so not so young people who might be interested in learning new ministries to have an experience where they can check out different ministries. Maybe if all of us would act on what God is showing us individually, then all of us collectively would be a church that could transform first Lawrence, then Kansas, then the middle of the nation, then the United States, then our hemisphere, then our world, then our solar system, then all of creation. I'm just saying, maybe we could be a force for God to be reckoned with if all of us would do us in God. I'm ready to see brothers and sisters dwelling together in real unity. I'm ready to see all of us taking our place and our space in God because I know when all of us do it, all of God is at work. This is the word of God for the people of God. All thanks and praise be to God.